This video builds on the previous video which introduced concepts of sketching Nyquist diagrams based upon gain and phase information. So the last video it said that the quickest way to get a sketch of a Nyquist diagram was probably by transcribing information on the Bode diagram. And if you want the plot to be accurate, then it's probably only needed near the negative real axis or where the gain is approximately unity. So what we're going to do in this video is give a number of examples illustrating this technique. Students are reminded, however, that the focus on sketching is mainly because you'll find it useful when ultimately we move to control loop analysis and design. So a reminder of the basic procedure. Firstly, use the asymptotic methods, asymptotic methods that is, used in the bowed plots to give yourself a rough bowed plot. So what sort of things do you need to know? What happens as omega tends to zero? What happens as omega tends to infinity? And roughly, and the key word here is roughly, how do gain and phase change for frequencies in between? And that's linked to the trend information which was given at the end of the previous video. What would you do next? Well, you might want to ask questions about what happens near the minus one point, which is zero decibels minus 180 degrees. You might also be interested in a range minus 180 to minus 120 degrees. And it's often quite useful to have a couple of precise points just to make sure the plot is accurate enough in that region. And finally, what you're going to do is tr transcribe this information into the Argand diagram using the sort of trending rules such as decreasing phase means you're moving clockwise and reducing gain means you're approaching the origin. Now, just a reminder, please take extra care in assessing the quadrant in which the plot lies, because getting the quadrant correct can be quite critical when we come ultimately to loop analysis. Here's a simple example then, just to get you started. So we've given g equals 1 over s plus 1, s plus 4. So what we've said, first of all, what happens for low frequencies? omega less than 1. And you'll see we've said the gain is going to be a quarter, certainly at a frequency of 0, and the phase will be 0. So if I put some Bode diagrams here, and we're doing a very crude sketch, so I'll put in the corner frequencies 1 and 4, what we've said is at low frequencies the gain is a quarter, and at low frequencies the phase is 0. What happens then between frequencies 1 and 4, the corner frequencies. Well, the gain, sorry, there should be a space there, the gain is going to have a slope because the asymptote says 1 over 4 omega, so we'll put a slope there. The phase asymptote will be minus 90, so we'll put that there, right, minus 90. And we'll go back to this section in a minute. And for very large omega, you see the gain slope is even steeper, and the phase asymptote goes down to minus 180. So now we can see roughly what's happening in terms of a trend. <coughs> now if I'm to add my phase characteristic a bit more precisely, it's clearly going to do something like this, where you're going to go through minus 90 degrees at omega equals 2. So if I wanted to, I could calculate this particular point here. And if I substitute omega equals 2 into what I've got up here, you're going to get modulus of g equals 1 over, and you're going to get the square root um, of 5 times 20. I'm not going to actually calculate that, but you can if you want to. So there's the key information. So now let's transcribe this information onto the Nyquist diagram. So what do we see? You see we start, as we said, at a quarter. We noticed that the gain was always decreasing. So if we measure distances like this, then what we need is that these distances are always getting smaller. So we've done the uh, real axis, and then what we said is between omegas, between 1 and 4, we said the gain was reducing and the phase was reducing. Now we could, as we indicated, calculate this particular point exactly. But the most important thing is to say, let's sketch a plot where the gain is reducing and the phase is reducing. 
We also noticed that for omega bigger than 4, we were tending in to the negative real axis with a gain of 0. And consequently, you can see this plot meets all the trends in the information that we were given. So that pretty much a reminder of what we did in the previous video. So now we'll do a few other examples. Um, here's the first one then. 3 over s plus 2. So again I'm going to start by doing my Bode diagrams. Now this has only got one corner frequency. I'm just going to mark it there at 2. And what you'll see is at low frequencies my gain is 3 over 2 and then for high frequencies the gain goes down. For low frequencies the phase is going to be 0. At high frequencies the phase is going to be minus 90 and clearly it will move between the two and you could calculate exactly at omega equals 2 you've got minus 45 degrees. So we've got our trends there. The gain is always reducing, the phase is always reducing, the phase goes from 0 to minus 90. The gain, so let's we'll put that here, starts at 1.5. We've got, we approach the origin in the direction of 90 to, minus 90 degrees, but critically what you'll notice here is we're always in quadrant 4. You notice from this phase plot it never goes into quadrant 1 and it never goes into quadrant 3. So what we need to do is just make sure the gain reduces, the phase reduces, we approach the origin along the negative imaginary axis and you're going to get a smooth plot something like this. Now you'll notice I've not put any scales on this plot, I've not put any numbers, I don't need them at this point because I'm just trying to get an impression of how this curve is moving. What about this one here then? So I've got 3 over s plus 1, s plus 2. So again if we use the standard uh, trick I'm going to start by doing the bode first and then filling in details later as I need them. So mark a corner frequency of 1, a corner frequency of 2. I can see at low frequencies I'm constant, then I get a slope and a steeper slope. So what you can see is the gain is always reducing. So what we've got is here the gain is 3 over 2 and then down here we will put gain reducing. Th those are the key observations we need. What about the phase? Well you'll see the phase if we do the asymptote type information like this then I can write that the phase is going to follow something along these lines and clearly this minus 90 degrees is going to correspond to omega equals root 2. I'll put minus 180 degrees is the final point. So what's happening with the face? So omega less than 1 you've got roughly 0 degrees, omega greater than 2 you're tending to minus 180 degrees and between omega between 1 and 2 at some point and I'm going to put here omega equals root 2 you get minus 90 degrees. So there's the key information. Now I could mark the quadrants that can be quite useful. You'll see we've got quadrant 4 up here and quadrant 3 here. So the plot remains always in quadrant 4 and quadrant 3. It doesn't go into quadrant 1 or 2. Now the final thing I can do is I can actually take this omega equals root 2 up and say can I calculate the gain at that particular frequency because that can be useful. So if I do that I'm going to get the modulus of g equals 3 over the square root of 3 plus, sorry 3 times not 3 plus, 3 times 6 which is 1 over root 2. So the gain is 1 over root 2 where the phase is minus 90. So we're going to mark all these points now. I'm going to start at 1.5 as given. So therefore if this is roughly minus j then it's going to cross somewhere like that. Now what else have I got? It approaches the origin in the minus 180 degree direction but in quadrant 3. So it approaches the origin in that sort of direction there. Okay, we know the gain is always decreasing, we know the phase is always decreasing, so I can now draw a smooth curve through the points I've got, the information I've got, and I'll end up with a Nyquist diagram 
something like that. Now for this next one you'll see I've moved to cubic 3 over s plus 1 squared times s plus 2 and so it'll be just a little bit more complicated so again I'm going to do my bowed sketches and I'm going to mark 1 and 2 and you'll see the gain again is constant up to 1 we have a slope down and a slope down so again you find you've got 3 over 2 for low frequencies and then the gain is decreasing. I'm not going to write it all because we're just indicating key points here. So the gain starts at 3 over 2 and then it's decreasing so you're always getting closer to the origin. So there's where we start, 1.5. What about the phase? Well the phase starts at 0, it will drop down to minus 180 and then to minus 270. So if I write that there, minus 180 minus 270. So the phase, again, is always decreasing. That's important. But asymptotically, you've got minus 270 degrees, and you start from 0 degrees. So you approach the origin in the direction of minus 270. So I'll draw an arrow there to indicate. So you approach the origin in the direction of the minus 270. And if again, if I mark the quadrants, you'll see it means you approach the origin in quadrant 2. And you're also going to spend some time in quadrant 3 and some time in quadrant 4. So you start in quadrant 4, move into quadrant 3, and finish in quadrant 2. Now you could do a few explicit calculations if you really need them. So for example, you could say, let's try omega equals 1. And the reason I'm using omega equals 1 is because of what I've got there. So what you'll find is modulus of g of j1, and you can do this by yourself relatively easily, gives you 3 over 2 root 5, Okay, which is approximately 0 0.7. I'm not going to put it in the calculator. Now, similarly, you could find the argument. Now, I've run out of space to fit this in, so I'm just going to write it overlap it here. So the argument of g of j1, what you're going to do is you'll get minus 90 from these two s, from the s plus 1 squared, minus 45 from each, and then from the s plus 2 you'll get minus 26. So what you'll see is that you're 26 degrees into quadrant 3 when the gain is 0 0.7. So that's going to be something like there see where I've marked the cross. So now I can use my information as before. I've got the right start point. I've got somewhere to hang myself. I know what the trends are. Always getting closer to the origin. Always moving anti-clockwise. I know that I finish along the positive imaginary axis. So I can do a sketch now that follows all of these trends and I'll get something like this. And hopefully you can see that if you were to look at the gain, you see always I'm getting closer to the origin. If you look at the phase, always moving anti-clockwise, and I've made sure I've moved through the two points that I had. Now, a final example, just to look at the impact of zeros. You'll notice here that I've got three examples which have got the same denominator, s plus 1, s plus 2, but what I've done is I've changed the zero position, minus the third, minus 1.5, minus 10. And I want to see how does the Nyquist change as I change this zero position. And the sort of thing you're going to notice is if the zero is the smallest, then the phase will go anti-clockwise before it goes clockwise, and the gain will increase before it decreases. OK, so we'll do the bowed sketches and you'll see this. So first of all, I'll do my gain sketch. What I'm going to do is mark the key points. I had 1 and 2. Those are the poles. We've also got 10, which is the smallest zero. We've got 3 over 2, which is one possible zero. And we've got a third. Now, don't worry about the fact that that's not a very careful log scale, because we're only doing a rough sketch to see what's going on. So if I start in blue with this one up here, you'll see the gain starts at 3 over 2. There it is. When we get to the zero, we'll have an upslope. When we get to the 1, we'll go flat. And then when we get to the 2, we go down again. So there's the asymptote plot for the first one. 
for this second one, you'll see we've now put the 0 at 3 over 2. So what will happen is you'll get to the 1, and then you'll go down, and then the slope will go flat, and then you'll go down again. Now what do you notice is you notice the gain of this second one is significantly less than the gain of the first one, and the gain is always reducing. And then finally, if I do this last one, where I've moved the 0 over to s plus 10, you'll see we go along here, the gain goes down, the gain goes down faster, and then goes back. So the last one, the gain is even smaller still. So there's a clear difference between the gain plots for these three. Now let's look at the phase plots. Now I'm going to need to mark some points on here. So I need 0, I need minus 90, minus 180, and I also need plus 90. So I'm going to start by doing the phase asymptotes to see what happens. So with the first one, oh sorry, did the first one in blue, we get to the third, the phase asymptote goes up to 90, we get to the 1, comes back, get to the 2, comes down to minus 90. So if I was to sketch the phase plot for this, I'm expecting it to do something along these lines. And what's the key point to note here is it goes into quadrant 1 and finishes in quadrant 2. What about the second one, for which we did red? Well, in this one, the phase asymptotes start at 0, go to minus 90, then go back up again, and then come back down again. So if I do this phase plot, I'm pretty much expecting something like this. In other words, it stays the whole time in quadrant 2. Now for the third example, you'll see... Oh, sorry, that, that re I've just noticed I made a silly mistake by that red one. I do apologise. I'm just going to correct it. So we... Um, I should have stayed there and then done that. I do apologise. OK, now for the black one, what you'll notice is again we stay at 0 degrees till we get to 1, go down to minus 90, get to 2, go down to minus 180, get to 10, and come up again. Oops. So, what sort of plot are we going to get here? Well, it's probably going to do something along these lines. And what's the significance of this last one? Is you see it starts in quadrant 2, and then it moves into quadrant 3 before coming back to minus 90 degrees. So they all finish, okay, they all finish at minus 90 degrees, but they get there a different way. So the blue one first went into quadrant 1, and then to quadrant 2. The red one was in quadrant 2 the whole time, and the black one started in quadrant 2 and went into quadrant 3 and approaches minus 90 degrees from quadrant 3. So now let's see how we put this onto a Nikos diagram. So you'll notice they all started <coughs> at 1.5. Now, if we do the blue one first, what did we have? We had gain going up, phase going up at low frequencies, and then only later on did they both start coming down. So if you follow this through, you'll see you end up with a plot something like this. So you approach the origin in the minus 90 degree direction in quadrant 2, but initially it went into quadrant 1. Okay, And you'll notice initially we had increasing gain, increasing phase. And that's what this bit around here does. You'll see the gains going up, the phase going up. What about the second one? The second one stayed entirely in quadrant 2. The gain was always decreasing, and it approached the origin within quadrant 2 in the minus 90 degree direction, and you'll get something a bit like this. So that was the second one. And then for the third one, you'll see it started in quadrant 2, but moved into quadrant 3 and um, before, again, approaching the origin in the minus 90 degree direction. So you're going to get something that does this. OK? So what do you notice? As I move the zero position, I get very different Nyquist diagrams. But the other thing you notice is extremely simple sketching it allows me to see exactly what's going on and to see the differences in the shapes. 
Now very quickly we're going to move to MATLAB and show how easily you can use MATLAB to check your results and see what's going on. So if I go to this MATLAB window here you'll see I've got some code written out so this code is for the um, 3 over s squared plus 3s plus 2 so if I run that code and there we go <coughs> and there you can see the sort of plot we got for that example you see starting at 3 over 2 coming round through quadrant 4 into quadrant 3 approaching the origin in the minus 180 degree direction when we added two poles at minus 1 and one pole at minus 2 and there, what did you see? Again, starting at 3 over 2 and circling round, you'll see through quadrant 4, quadrant 3, into quadrant 2, approaching the origin in the minus 270 degree direction. And the final example, where we showed all three together. And what do you see? You see the first example, you see how it starts at minus 3 over 2 and first goes into quadrant 1 and does this big loop round before it comes back to the origin in the minus 90 degree direction. The second one stayed entirely in quadrant 4 and then the last one you can see which here is done in red comes round into quadrant 3 before coming back to the origin. Now you'll have noticed with these plots that they've all got a mirror image. We'll talk about this mirror image uh, later but for now don't worry about it. Now if you haven't picked up the key statement to do this on MATLAB, you'll see it's here, is just Nyquist G. Create your transfer function object and then just put it in the brackets. So conclusions. We've demonstrated you can form a Nyquist diagram very quickly for simple transfer functions. And the basic technique is to sketch the Bode diagram and you'll see it's a very crude sketch to get an impression of how the gain and phase change and then just transcribe this information into the complex plane. We've also demonstrated very briefly that MATLAB's a good tool for generating the exact plots quickly um, and indeed you can use it to check your hand-drawn sketches and understanding.